with less than 24 hours left to go until the month of August comes around, it is time to be looking at what essentially has been the historical returns for July, or not July, but August. We just got through July, or we're almost through July at least. Anyways, uh, we're going to be looking at statistics with price action um, analysis. And other than that, I want to welcome you back to the Air Crown Crypto channel. It is a very dreary, very non-summary day over here from Helsinki, Finland. There's your quick weather report of the day from Mr. Honig. And... I do want to once again remind you that you can still get the Jewel app free for the first 30 days if you follow the directions and the link in the description below. There's your free show of the day, and let's just start it off right in over here with the topic of today, and that is looking at August price action and where essentially the month has opened versus where it has closed. So we're not gonna be looking at highs and lows in this case, just the open versus the close. And as you can see, there have been 13 prior Augusts all represented by these green vertical bars right here. And actually of those 13, five, just five have actually posted positive gains. Now, to be fair, um, one of those months, in fact, it was the first August that we did witness way back on over here, or sorry, not the first August that we um, witnessed, but it was, where was it? Whoops, I'm on the wrong chart, that's why. Okay, sweet, yes, there we go. The monthly right here. We can see that uh, the, fir the first August over here, opened at six cents, closed at six cents. So in this case, it's really five out of 12. Not that that makes it so much better, but if we go ahead and reference all of these statistics that I've added up over here, we can see that five out of 12 would give it about a 41 and a half percent, a little bit better than 41 and a half percent historical rate for, well, posting positive gains. Now of those winning months, let's say winning in the case of the Boo Laws here, uh, it's actually really strange how we always kind of default to, you know, winning to the long side where realistically it can be both sides, right? Um, but of the, you know, of the of the uh, positive gain months, on average, there was a 24.5% return about. Uh, now, one of these returns, which was way back about five years ago now, um, I believe that would put us in what, like 2017, 2018? Um, I think it was actually 2017. It had to be in 2017, actually. Uh, there was a humongous gain, about 65% as you can see right here. So a bit of an outlier in this case. Um, so if we were to get rid of that one, you know, that'd bring the average returns for the positive side a uh, little bit less than 14.5%, you know, to be fair. So I'm actually gonna put that back on just so that I can have that data saved. Uh, but for the losing months, the average return, the average loss was about just under 16% actually. Um, with a lot of those, uh, w you know, with a lot of those losses actually pretty much bunched up around that level. Uh, obviously, one of the first ones over here, um, this was in 2011, I believe it was, um, was a pretty big loss, 38.5%. So again, kind of, you know, getting rid of the outlier in this case, uh, that'd bring it down to about 12%. So do the same thing over here. But let's kind of play around with the numbers. So again, you know, 14%, 14.5% versus about 12%. Let's just see what that would look like on top of current price action, assuming that Bitcoin closed is basically somewhere you know right away right around where it currently is so to the upside 14 percent puts you where puts you at about thirty four thousand bucks or so uh, which is one of the next major areas of interest upon continuation um, that we've been looking at and to the downside what would that look like at about 12 percent loss would put bitcoin backed at around uh, just below 26,000 bucks. Again, these are averages, you know, but you can kind of get, you know, get an idea of around the area of interest there. So I would say, you know, maybe even a little bit lower than 25 is one of the areas that we were looking at uh, in the past week that if Bitcoin does, you know, have a pretty nasty fall, that would be an area of interest certainly to the downside and to the upside. Yeah, 34, 35,000 bucks is, you know, certainly uh, still very much on the radar, um, assuming that Bitcoin can actually get continuation. So with that said, you know, August, more likely to trade to the downside. In fact, if we were to just look at Augusts, oh, it's really hard to say actually, Augusts, Augusts, Augai, <laughs> maybe maybe something like that. Um, if we were just look, to, to look at August um, before election years, which we are, you know, uh, you know, before an election year right now, um, the last one would be when? Well, that would be 2019 August, and you can see that that was a down month right here. Okay, interesting. Um, if we go to the one before that, we'd have to go back to 2015, right? And yet another down August right here. And if we were to go to one before that, we go to 20, uh, 2011 and another down month right here. So, you know, for the very limited data that we do have, 
uh, three out of three past August, you know, before the election year, uh, were down months and actually, in some cases, pretty significantly down, I'd say. Um, you know, certainly, certainly this one over here, 2011 was quite some time ago. However, um, I mean, shit, even this one over here actually did put in the low of 2015. And uh, while the actual body loss itself was, you know, still significant at about 17%, uh, the wick to the downside was about 41.5% actually, um, before it did recover uh, end of month. And then, of course, I believe it was, yes, uh, where was it, um, 2019 over here, uh, more or less sideways, but actually in, the, in this case, it actually did have a nice uh, nice try to the upside, but, you know, more, more or less sideways, very minimal loss in that case. Anyways, uh, yeah, more likely to trade to the downside in August um, is what history would show. And, uh, I, you know, again, I kind of stick with my worst case scenario somewhere around like 25 ish give or take a few bucks um and uh and on the lesser side you know maybe maybe somewhere around like uh low 27s um and i still think best case scenario is probably like uh, low 28s anyway speaking of that let's go over here to the hpdr ranges guess what they haven't fucking changed they haven't changed at all in over a week because bitcoin's been sideways as hell for a week as well um anyways in this case uh you know, to the upside, we do see that the average of the range st still coming in around that 29.5 ish region. If Bitcoin does start to close four hour uh, dildos above that region, you know, perhaps we do see a move back into the shallow 30s, like 30,200. It doesn't imply any sort of like major breakout, however. Um, still major breakout to the upside with very likely continuation, you know, towards those uh, 33, 34, $35,000 areas of interest. Um, you know, I really wouldn't enter entertain that possibility until Bitcoin's back above 30,400. Um, just this sort of, you know, general area where Bitcoin's been putting in these rejective lower highs. Um, by the same token to the downside, current low side of the range is in the mid 28s. If we go over here to the daily, um, this is kind of where I'm getting that low 28 number. Uh, still, you know, I think that's kind of like if Bitcoin traces the downside, that's probably best case scenario for a low at 28.2. Um, and yeah, this this one actually showing the average of the range kind of closer to that 30,400 ish region. In fact, I suspect that we do see that start to align relatively soon, maybe in like a week or so, once we get a new block of data right here. Um, and then of course, if you do see this area broken, 28,200 to the downside, yeah, that's where that's where big problems start to uh, emerge from and probably where we do start to see um, well, one of those lower targets get hit. Anyways, uh, we can go ahead and run through some stochastic momentum over here. Um, you know, I really wasn't getting too much from this, to be quite frank with you, but uh, I'll show it nonetheless. Weekly time frame is going to be showing some downside momentum as long as Bitcoin's below 31,200 to open up this week. Um, so, I mean, that's, uh, you know, again, another thing kind of suggesting downside to open up August. And of course, that would also be considered a rejection of the critical zone right here and also confirming if it does confirm a local high uh regular bearish divergence which you know that that one's a little bit still further away um but uh but yeah below last week's low well that comes into play um going over the five-day time frame this one's going to be closing tonight as well alongside the monthly and we do see that it is going to also twist to the downside below 30,600, assuming that bitcoin does close below there on cme currently trading about a thousand bucks below daily time frame is going to be actually freshly crossed to the upside and will be remaining with upside momentum as long as bitcoin's above 29,150. so again some bifurcation here 12 hour time frame same thing vertical above 29,350. six hour time frame also actually uh nice and erect above 29 500. In fact, doing something of, of particular interest right here is it is breaking um, this trendline regression uh, that has been putting the highs and governing the highs since late June. So this would suggest that short term Bitcoin probably does try some upside moves. Um, you know, even if it does tag 30,200, that this still doesn't really do too much for it. I uh, need to see it above that mid 30 ish, you know, 30, 34, 35 ish region uh, before it starts to, you know, really uh, threaten a real breakout to the upside with with major continuation um, on its hands. And in, in this case, just relevant for the short term. Four hour time frame uh, also can be showing vertical uh, above 29.5. And hourly is. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's going to be loading, baby, but we got all the time in the world. Bitcoin hasn't moved in a week anyways. Uh, 29,639, which Bitcoin's trading about uh, 15 bucks below um, on CME. So again, very high term time frames, bifurcated with the lower term time frames, but all lower term time, term time frames kind of on the same side. So Bitcoin probably gets another, uh, you know, a little bit of a try to the upside in the uh, in the short term. 
And then at that point, you get to play the game of does it actually uh, reclaim any one of the critical regions or not. Um, I expect that we probably see some more sideways. Crazy prediction, I know, but uh, but probably some more sideways for another week, I expect. Uh, maybe even another couple weeks. I'd say like seven to ten days. Um, I wouldn't be super surprised by. And then after that, game on yet again, I suspect. Anyways, uh, other than that, I want to welcome you... Uh, <laughs> want to welcome you back we're starting the video over baby no it's like, it's like my brain has uh, has broken um from all of this i mean realistically it's been going sideways since like uh yeah 21st of june i'd say so we're we're going on week number six maybe, maybe week number seven now uh but yeah as always wishing you the best of best take care much love and see you hopefully tuesday with something due to actually look at take care